First, I want to thank you all for being here. A, a year ago, I was being treated for breast cancer at Mass General, and I hopefully nobody's ever been up on that floor before, but it's quite beautiful. And I would sit in my chair and I would look out and I would say, you know, a year from now, I will be over the river and through the woods. And it was my sort of metaphor. And literally, here I am, like, over the river. So I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Um, I was going to give a talk on the visual builder. And I don't know how many of you are, were following Divi and the 100-day launch. And once it hit, I kept thinking, oh, I'm, maybe it's me. Um, I just haven't given it enough time yet. But it, to me, is a visual editor and not a builder. And so I felt it would be more beneficial to maybe dial it back and talk about the 13 most frequently asked questions in Divi. And the reason that I feel that I am qualified to present this to you is because I started using Divi almost two, maybe two and a half, three years ago, and out of a need for sharing what I was figuring out and wanting to ask questions, I started a Facebook group called the Divi Theme Users Group, and it has grown to over 18,000 people. So there's constant sharing constantly people are asking questions and every hour people are answering them so it's a, it's a huge community if you're not a part of it I, I invite you to come in there and I monitor it very closely with my business partner Andrew um, to try and keep out you know the junk and through that I see all of the questions and answers so that's why we're gonna go through the 13 most frequently asked questions and here we go, this is about me. The number one thing all the time is how to change the footer because people want to get rid of um, made by elegant themes. And with the 3.0 launch, you can actually now do this in your theme customizer. So when you log into the customizer, you know, in your dashboard and you go to the footer, there's, you can see right there, disable the footer credits. Is this mouse give me? No. Um, disable the footer credits. You can either just turn everything off or you can type in made by you with a link to your website or your copy trademark, whatever you want right down in there, um, which is huge because before that you used to have to go um, into the files, which a lot of people didn't like. The next is what is a child theme? And this is near and dear to my heart because I am a business partner in Elegant Marketplace and we sell premium child themes and plugins and layouts. There's also free stuff in there as well. But a child theme allows you to create files that overlay the core files. So if you have a header, well, I'm sorry, it will give you a new header. Uh, footer, PHP, and CSS. So if you were going to modify any of those things, you would put them in the child theme, and then when you update Divi, which seems like they're coming out with new releases every day, <laughs> you're not wiping out your custom CSS or your header or footer. Um, now the footer, you know, that's not a problem anymore. And let's see, here we go. And so do I need a child theme? Technically, absolutely not, because, you know, the theme is there for you to use. But if you're modifying any files, and I know there's a ton of coders in here, so you definitely want one. This, the CSS you can keep um, in the theme options panel. I would recommend wherever you decide to put it, put it all in one place. So if somebody comes in behind you, they can find it all. Um, so you don't have to do it, but I suggest that, that you do use a child theme. It's a best practice. Um, and then what is a premium child theme? So um, this is when you buy a theme that's already made, a, a website that's already developed, and it could have 
functionality that you may like. We have um, on Elegant Marketplace, for example, we have a, a theme for f food bloggers, and it comes ready with the recipes, plugins, and other things you may need. Whereas the theme for a landscaper would have a different set of plugins. The images are all light, laid out for you, which is very helpful when you're working with clients. You can say to them, if you like this look, we're going to need this kind of a big hero image. This is on the about page. We need these kind of pictures. It helps you um, with the design process. If you're not really considering yourself a designer, then this is all taken care of for you. And those files just lay right on top of the Divi theme. Um, and there's, in addition to the, a premium child theme with Divi, you probably know you can import and export layouts, which is also helpful to get your sites built more quickly. So how to get your website to run faster with the Divi Builder. This has absolutely nothing to do with making Google happy on the front end. It is just for the back end. If you feel like the builder is a slow load for you, you can go into your PHP, um, I'm sorry, your HT access file and add this little bit of code, which is in the um, Facebook group and I can share my slides, so um, you can just copy and paste that in. Um, and it speeds things up on the back end. Okay, this one I see all the time, and it has stumped me more than once, I hate to say. But my blog is not showing my posts, and it's making me crazy. So make me crazy. I don't know if it's making anybody else crazy. But what people sometimes don't understand with Divi is that if you are using the blog module, then the blog page isn't typically what you would consider the blog. So therefore, when you're in your theme customizer and it says what's your home, your what page do you want on front on the front page and you typically would say okay, I want it to be home. And then it says, what do you want your blog page to be? And you're choosing a page that you've had the page builder on. It's going to not show the page that you've created with your page builder. It's going to show what the typical layout of your blog. So if you are using the, the module, leave the option for the blog at select. So just the default. Just don't touch it. Why is there so much space? This drives everybody crazy. So they, the Divi has um, padding in your margins, your border, the padding section, and then the content. So um, if you've, you've probably all seen this, and I should have brought it like the graph where it has the different sections, uh, like space around. So the border is set to zero, so you don't need to worry about that. But the padding and the margins, um, in many cases, seem to be wider than what people would like. So in your theme options, you can, across the board, change them to make them smaller, both the gutter width and the, the height. Or you can individually, in each section row or module, set the, the padding to be whatever you want. So um, I think by default it's set at four, and if you want like those gutterless images, you could set them to zero, and then your images will stack right up alongside one another. Okay, so why don't the images appear in the size that you've uploaded them? This is because based on the um, responsiveness that Divi is pulling in the aspect ratio and so your width may be one thing like let's say you want something to be a full full width and then the image comes out really really narrow it's because you don't have any content in there and if you don't want any content in there that's totally fine because you can go into the back end and in your padding you can adjust the percentage so instead of putting a hard number of, of pixels, like let's say I want 200, like if you have a great big hero image, if you do that, then it will throw off 
how it looks on phones and tablets. So if you put in a percent, then you're just bumping it up a little bit on the top and the bottom. And just play with the percentages to get the image to be the height that you'd like. Okay, the slider is cutting off my image. So the slider sometimes will crop people off and you don't have that padding option. In that case, I use the Divi Booster plugin and it's, um, I think it's $18, so it's a little bit of an investment, but it has 50 features that you can use to customize your site. So um, there's lots to do in there. I use it a lot for if you're using a slider to set the height, I highly recommend it. Okay, can I add my own color scheme? And you can, and this is sort of a, a subtle thing to find, but in your theme options, you'll see this default color palette. And if you click on any of the colors, like let's say you know, I just, I will never use purple. If you click on it, the selector shows up and you either put in your hex code or you drag and you find the color that you want and you set it there. You can do it as many times as you want. And then when you're on the back end, let's say in advanced settings of a page, then, and you are looking for colors, you'll see the colors there. So that's sort of a little hidden one. And how do I get a transparent navigation menu? So I, you can see this is the home page of my website. And what you do is you go into the primary menu bar. And I, sh I should have had the, a selector. It's similar. The look is similar here where you have the one bar. But then next to it, on the right-hand side, you'll have another bar. And that bar sets the transparency. So on the case of my website, I put the background to white, and then I just made it 100% transparent. And you can do that with all sorts of um, the modules. You can put in a transparency with Divi. So it's kind of a fun thing to play with. It's a good effect. Can I white lab label Divi? Again, this is a premium plugin. Um, for the coders out there, you can probably just do this all on your own. For somebody like me, this plugin is great. You can put it in there, and then it hides um, ha hides a lot of stuff, and it definitely hides that you're using Divi. Okay, the blog posts are the images by default are quite large, and a lot of people much prefer the thumbnail look. Um, I like back in the day, came up with this little bitty bit of code, and it has worked for me. I've had a couple people on once or twice say that they didn't work for them. So um, maybe it's the importance, or, or I don't know, they didn't copy it correctly. But for $10, there's a um, KK Divi Blogger plugin, which gives you all types of I think there's eight different size options for the blog posts in addition to some other <coughs> functionality. So if you're using Divi for the blogging, this might be something that, that you want to invest in or just copy this and put it right in and you're good to go. Um, so those were my 13 most frequently asked questions. I hope they answered something that maybe you stumbled across in, in your building process um, and I invite you to look at my website EileenLonergan.com has a bunch of Divi tutorials and then Elegant Marketplace our blog has a lot of tutorials and jo please join the Facebook group there's lots of helping and sharing going on over there so thank you Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> How many people?
people use Divi? Does anybody use it at all? Yeah? Do you like it? Yeah. Do you know about the Facebook page that I runs? Actually, I'm, I'm a member of a bunch of them, but I don't know. What's, what's yours called? Divi theme user. Go ahead. Okay. Eileen will come right back up. I know she's a if, if we beg really hard, she'll come back up. Um, so I have, uh, I'm starting to use child themes, premium child themes. And um, I discovered that there are, you can change the CSS on your own, um, but it's kind of a hunt and peck kind of thing. You've got to find what something is and go change it. But there are tools like, uh, I've just started using uh, CSS Hero, mm -hmm. and there's another one called, um, uh, actually I can't remember the name of it right now, but I'll, I'll look it up. Okay. Um, do you find those tools useful, and are the ones that you like better than others? Yeah, that's a really good question. I was an early buyer, purchaser of CSS Hero, and I just never really loved it. Um, there is a lot of CSS in Divi, so it is kind of um, much more challenging to dig deeper than in some other themes. With the child themes, I, I always suggest to people, pick something that is as close to what you ultimately want the design to be. And the developers are becoming much more um, like impressive, I guess, in offering you the ability to change colors. Um, there's one designer we have, Juice um, Amanda. She's from Australia, and her themes all have a few different options for colors. Um, so in, I'm sort of a little bit of, I guess, an old school person for hunting down the CSS. So if you could share your tools, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Can you give us a little background on how you decided to invest all this time into Divi versus you know, using something else? Yeah, yeah. So I have always sort of had the philosophy that knowing one theme really well was easier than knowing using a whole bunch of different themes. And I, I have used them all, you know, to a, a certain extent. Um, and. I am a member with, with Sandra, and we both used the small biz theme for a long time. And one of our other colleagues or friends in that group called me and said, you know, I think that you would like this Divi theme because you're constantly looking for CSS and, and setting up div codes, and, you know, I think this would just make your life easier. So it really sort of hit with me. I am lucky enough to get a lot of projects, so it was great for a variety of projects. You know, I've got bloggers, I've got um, sort of bigger businesses, I've got, you know, plumbers, and I was able to make it work for all, all of them. So because we were a member of this other group and I just saw the value so much and what we got out of it, I decided that I would start this Facebook group for Divi theme users kind of selfishly because I was getting stuck and, and I needed some help and so I thought okay I'll set up this community and I literally you know I'm, I'm I like SEO and I spend a lot of time on it but I I put up a few blog posts and would link to the Facebook group and I made one comment on elegant themes um, one of their blog posts and then Nick Roach joined the group and promoted it and it just sort of took off. So um, I, I've i held the group sort of close to my heart and, and my vest and not, I've had a few people over time ask if they could also um, monitor the group and I have politely declined. My partner Andrew and I take care of it. We have two other sort of silent people um, because I, I wanted to maintain the group. I don't want it to be just selling, you know, people coming in and posting their jobs or just trying to sell their plugins. And so it was really sort of by accident that I've spent so much time on it. But um, I, I believe in the community and the helpfulness. And so I just, and the more I use it, the more I, I like it and, you know, want to stick with it and enjoy it. Hi, I've done a lot of um, hand coding for websites.
sites in HTML and CSS, and I've also used uh, some WordPress. I'm familiar with the what is it, the WYSIWYG and um, user interface with, with WordPress. I have a um, client now that has I hand coded the site, and the clients want to update <coughs> their sites. Yeah. And um, I found that um, some clients have redone their websites over the past four years because they cannot update their sites. So I would love to, s I've been looking at Divi, that's why I came tonight, the timing is really good because I just found it last week and elegant um, themes. themes, Yep. yes, and uh, so I'm really looking to bring over this um, site that is only about seven pages, Okay. it's not a huge site, um, into a theme like Divi and I'm concerned about getting stuck and, you know, will it look like the original site and I also am not an expert, but I have done work in PHP behind, you know, in the back end, and yeah. would like to refresh this. Um, I don't know how to find the CSS that elegantly in in the you know, themes. And right. So I'm familiar with all of it, but I want to take it to the next step. And right. So one thing I always say to people who are saying, uh, you know, coming into the project of a rebuild with, I want it to look exactly the same, is really like really, you know, like, <laughs> you know, it has to function. Function is the most important right. part, and right. to bring in the components that are right. Okay. Okay. It's a basic site. So one thing um, feature in Divi that may be appropriate for you is is you have the ability as the administrator to limit the control or access that other um, users have. So for example, if you don't want them changing, and you have that level uh, over the whole entire website, or okay, okay. Yeah, because uh, the, the person who will be using administering administrating the site will um, is pretty savvy and will be able to explore. And you know, I'm just concerned about my work bringing over the content into Divi and and, um, and understanding maybe a little bit more in the back end. Would would your Facebook group be um, something that would be able to uh, talk to someone who is trying to look? CSS. Yep, yep. There's all levels of, of I mean, there's over 18,000 people, so there's a huge variety of, of levels. And there, um, I, everybody has to start somewhere, and we've all been at sort of, you know, the starting point. So um, I try to monitor if somebody is being disrespectful towards an, a newbie question. Um, and, you know, sometimes I get people saying, you know, like reporting to me sort of privately, um, and, and Andrew and I take care of that. But I definitely think that it would be a, a place for you to start. Um, and I would say, you know, there's all kinds of videos out there on, on YouTube and on our site that can get you going. Um, and it's... Once you log in and you see, you know, I can make columns and rows, and then the modules, there's 40 different options for the type of module. And if it's a simple site, you probably don't need much more than the text and the image, maybe. Um, a and video. Yeah, yeah. Gallery. A video, okay, so a gallery, so yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, there, there, you definitely have Not options that for that. Movie, but we're, you know. Right. <laughs> but I Right, right. It's yeah. It's good to keep growing, and it's good. I, I definitely believe that clients should have access to their websites because you know, for a lot of us, we are just operating independently. And if something happens, like I got sick, you know, why shouldn't a client be able to log in and make their own change or like, you know? So, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I just want to add. I came to Divi not knowing much about. Great tool to uh, to learn with because you can start very simply and then get more and more sophisticated. And I've you know I've gotten to the point where I'm doing some CSS and other coding. And, uh, so it's it definitely I find it's a tool that you can either just you know cruise at 10 miles an hour or you can start speeding along. Did you first purchase the? There are three different levels of 
I started the lowest, and now I'm just lifetime. But you did so, <laughs> yeah. is that a joint after a year? The lowest is an admin, I think, $69 yeah. dollars for, yeah. and then there's a developer for yeah. 89 and then two something for the year, or for the lifetime. Yeah. How long is What it are they be? saying about different things that can't really it's hard. It's hard to hear you guys. They're, they're talking about the levels of membership with elegant themes. So if you just want to try out and, and buy the theme, I think it's a $69 uh, entry. And then there's a mid-range price, isn't there? Like maybe 89 and I don't know what you get for 89 And then mm -hmm. lifetime is, I think, 250 Do they, so, do they have like a 30-day yeah. trial or something like that? I, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a question? Uh, what are the biggest pros and cons to it? Maybe you can go over that. Yeah. So for me, I love the fact that you can use the page builder to set up your columns and your rows and, you know, organize pages in, in different ways. Um, I love when the photo gallery is doing the gutterless gallery. I like that look that I could never get with other themes before. Um, I think that the community is great because no matter what you're doing, you're going to get stuck and you're going to want to ask a question and you are going to have a victory and you are going to want to share because, you know, it's exciting to put your stuff out there and, and you know, get feedback from people. Um, so I, I would say those are the, the pros. Um, you know, they're very very dedicated, the team at Elegant Themes, to staying current and updating the theme. They're committed, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. It, it, it may be too much, but on the other hand, you don't want to invest, even if it's only, you know, $89 in a theme that the developers next week are going to be, you know, I don't know, kiteboarding and, or, or on to the next thing. So, you know, they're, they're in it. They also the, had a 100-day countdown yeah. to their latest um, version, and they were giving away things every day. And I, I have that as a resource now, because there's just so much information in there. There's so much information, yeah. and they were giving away literally layouts, um, yeah, all, all sorts of stuff. So what we've done on Elegant Marketplace is we aggregated all of them, and we put it in a zip drive. So if you want to go on to Elegant Marketplace, you can download the 100 days into one file, and then you have all of the layouts and all of the free things that they offered during that 100 days. Um, but the 100 days was also really good. They had lots of tutorials and suggestions, and it was, there was a big education component. I think that um, Nathan Weller, uh, yeah, he did a great job. <coughs> What are, yeah, what are the cons? You know, I definitely, um, we're, we were talking about this a little bit before Tom and I, that it's not the fastest out there. So if you really, if SEO is your number one and you have a big site, you, you may want to do, you know, have somebody do the coding or do the coding yourself for some of the plugins or, or you know, just opt out. Um, so... And then some of the things are really frustrating. You know, if you upload an image and you expect it to be, um, you know, 1,200 pixels wide and 500 height, and, you know, for a lot of people, that thin line is frustrating. Yeah. So one thing I do is uh, once I figure out what all the measurements are, I use something called Canva, which is kind of like a simple Photoshop on and I set everything up as a template. So every time I need to do that kind of image, I just go into Canva and put it in, and I know it's going to be the right size. So I think you're going to have that problem in most themes. So once you figure yeah. out sizes, you can just, right. you know, either a Photoshop template or you know. Does it yeah. give you the dimensions for the images? Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah. Template? yeah. And I love Canva, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Yeah. Uh, you said uh, yeah. one of the cons was that uh, yeah. it's, it's kind of a heavy theme. Uh, have you found that caching and uh, CDNs and those sorts of things have been enough to overcome that for many of the sites? 
they definitely definitely can overcome that for sure i don't i think that there are um some real purists out there that just feel like you know it's it's heavy and it's cold i think you can probably overcome uh, a lot of it um and, and and i think that's sort of true of wordpress there's always a solution to every problem and it's probably if we all had the same problem we'd probably come up with a bunch of different solutions you know so um, it's just interesting but yeah I think I think you can definitely speed up the site does that answer yeah. your pros and cons yeah any any one of the page builders gonna have things built into it that's gonna slow the site down so it's not just Divi, and, you know, and it's going to vary around by theme. So if you're using caching, you know, caching or um, I'm trying to think of else, or, or CDNs, it's definitely going to it's going to help. But it's not going to be as fast as if it was a site that was it was all coded without any of the um, the custom stuff in to help you build a page. You know, so you can still have a site that that loads relatively quick. I forget how fast this site loads. Um, Oh, because well, the hosting is too. Yeah, and it also depends on your host. The host is, makes a huge difference. This is being held on uh, on A2 with their Turbo Boost, whatever it is. It's a variation of an Apache server, and it it loads pretty darn quick. It does it does really pretty fine. Well, I mean, while you were talking, I pulled up the back of you know you want to know the advantages of Divi. So this is the back end of the Boston WP site. So this is actually what the home page looks like on the back end. So you can see all the different things that are, that are showing up. So, <clears throat> so for example, you know, if I'm looking at, if I want, um, if I want these, you know, th three different things here, and I don't know how to code, you know, I'm screwed to be able to build a page that's going to be different. But with Divi, I mean, you, you're just using their page builder stuff, and it just says, how many columns do you want, um, you know, what colors, and, and all that kind of stuff, and you can just build it out uh, however you kind of want it to look like. So that's the advantage of, um, of a page builder. I mean, there's lots of page builders out there, but uh, Divi is, I think it's the number one. Right now, it's, it's the number one uh, page builder um, theme. So that's kind of the advantage, if you, especially if you're not a coder and you want to be able to build a site that's unique. This is, you know, this is a real simple way for you to go. Right. Yeah. Just a side, a little bit of side note, since you're on here, before I got here, I was looking for the address and I used a tablet for this. And there's a error. Actually, no. It, we, we, we built it out about three weeks ago, and I've been trying to add functionality, so I really haven't checked it out that well. So it's, if, you, if you email me where it is, we'll fix it. So you're talking about, let's see. Yeah, so yeah, if you uh, reduce your browser window right now and push this into rendering the mobile version, get out of full screen. Yeah, so get out of full. And squeeze it. Go into um, 
enable Visual Builder. It'll give you all of the options for your mobile as well. <coughs> okay. So I guess I'm not necessarily... Is that, is that what you want? Is that... I heard it was in the footer, so I'm in the footer. I'll go up to the top and see her other... Got the little. We've got that. <coughs> so pull it out a little bit more. Showing the number of There. I've had that on another site too. Where see how all of a sudden it bumps it up really big. Yeah. I was having that problem with another site today. You just have too much resolution on your tablet. You need a new tablet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, yeah. we'll take a look at that and, and get that fixed. Like I said, it's a really bad idea for me to work on a live site. <laughs> yes. What else? So I just wanted to uh, say another way of looking at Divi is you can save money. So for example, I have to build landing pages. And in the past, I've used rather expensive tools that have pre-built landing pages. Um, and they work well, but I always feel the pressure of the annual renewal of you know seven dollars $800 for building pages, uh, landing pages. So what I've found is it's incredibly fast. If you have a design that you're going to copy, it's incredibly fast to do it in um, Divi. And so I've canceled all my subscriptions for the, uh, the, the landing pages and marketing pages and stuff. And I just look at what they've done and I just reproduce it really quickly. So it's a way of saving money. Yeah, so with, the, with Divi, there's an import and export. So themes, the layouts can, are all portable. And you can do this with your theme settings, and you can do it with, uh, you know, modules up to sections or rows, and you can put them in your library and take them from one site to another. So you definitely can make the process of, of building sites move pretty quickly. And one other thing, you, when we were looking at the back end, you could see some of the boxes are labeled text. Which, and those can all be renamed. So if you're passing over a site to a client or another designer, you can say exactly which is in each thing. So when somebody's on the back end, they can read, okay, this is where I find, you know, the address or the homepage text or the title or whatever. So you can change that. Yeah. You can add from library or you can take the whole page and save to library right there. If you like that layout and you're going to use it on a whole bunch of other pages, yeah. you can save that or you can save just the little module. I had right. one where I was just putting a contact thing on every page. So I just saved that right. module and I just right. plopped you, it in when I needed it. And you can save modules as global or, and so therefore if you change it in one place it changes it across the board. So I have a, a couple clients who have, you know, changed their hours during the summer and winter. And so if they have a global module, you just change it once and across the board it propagates. Um, and as, if you right click on any of these modules, sections or rows, you get options. So for example, if you didn't want your client to be able to edit this text box, you just right click and you lock and then they can't get in there. Save to library, you know, all sorts of, all sorts of stuff. So there's a lot of little hidden bits that once you get going, really. And some you find by accident. <laughs> I know, I know. The right click, I found that by accident one day. I was like, wow. I have a newbie question. Yeah. When you save to library, where are those files? Are they on your host? Um, so no, there. It's in. It's in the WordPress it's, install. Yeah, I'm going to be very gentle with with. Not my website, but under Divi, you'll see there's the library. Okay. So it all. It's all on your host. They're not on your desktop. Nope. You can export them to your desktop and then import. 
You can do that. Yes, if you want them, if you want them there, because then you can put them into your next web design, if you, if you want, if you're reusing layouts. Yeah. Okay. So can you say that one more time? Or just oh yeah. So with the theme, you can see here under Divi, there's the library, and in the library, you can have stored layouts of pages or sections, rows, or even modules. So let's say you wanted to save the, the contact form module, and you could make that a global layout, and then if you change it once, it changes any time it's, it's on the website. So they all live right within your um, theme, but if you say, you know what, I really like that layout that I made for, let's say you're doing lots and lots of plumbing websites. You know, Plumber A, he can have the same layout as Plumber B. I'm just going to export that. You put it onto your desktop, and then you import it into the next website. You could, you know, sort of patch together whole websites based on other layouts. Yep. I'm kind of going back to the question, but hopefully in a way that works for us here. Um, I'm wondering if you might be able to show people the responsiveness version that you know, through the page builder you can see the various uh, yep. estimated breakpoints. It's not the same as, of course, like playing around with the, the CSS and everything like that to get the head of the workout right when you have a situation like this, but it is a very powerful part of that. So what you want to do sort of a customizer? Because we can do this. Yeah. If you go. Yeah. You, so, if you're in the customizer, you can see the different layouts. Just the tablet version and the phone version. And then, if you want to go into, if we can go back to the page. Oh, oh, okay. And then if we go down to um, our preview, let's, or let's just look at, um, let's just look at any one of those. So let's say we're, like if we click on the section, can we, can we only do that? I'm mm -hmm. sorry, the, um, Here? yeah. And then if you click on the eyeball, Okay, so across the top in purple, you can see the desktop, the tablet, and the phone. And if you click, you can see the different layouts. Is this what you were asking to see? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then you can do that in individual modules and sections. You can see everything. Um, and you can also uh, customize, let's say you want your header font on your hero image on the desktop to be 100. Well, clearly you don't want that on a tablet. You have the ability to click to the tablet, change the size of the font, and then you can change it to the phone and change the size of the font. So you can really drill down into the different devices. I mean, it gets really complicated writing these media queries for all the different sizes and until somebody says, you know, on this size, this is what I see. Sometimes, you know, it, it happens just organically and other times you have to say, oh, like, what the heck was this <coughs> spacing there and then, then write that out. But for the basics, you can always have the option of seeing how it will look on the individual screens or the phone tablet, you know, the sort of generic size. Sure. Do you want me to we log into one of my sites? Yeah, because yeah. we don't have anything in the library yeah. on this okay. So. Yeah, I'm only a little <laughs> nervous here. I mean, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said that on the page. Go to back up. Yeah, I don't. Oh, let's see. All right, so I, my little sandbox site probably has 
way, way, way more than what it should, but let's see. And hopefully I know my password. Let's see. Okay, so this is my little sandbox site, and I'll just show you the front end. I th okay, is it not even, let's see. I think I have a child theme in here. Let's see. Okay, no, we have Divi is, is the live theme. So, if we go to Divi and we click on the library, you can see, you know, clearly you wouldn't want to launch a site with all this stuff in the library unless you're really using it, but you can see all of the different things in here. These are all layouts, they're not global. Um, you, you can sort them based on, you know, if you want to look at a whole section, a layout, a module. Here we have some that are layouts that are modules. And then if you wanted to actually use one, you'd click on edit because you can edit them here in your library and then take them to a page. So here we have Divi Demo 1, which I don't I think this is from the 100 days that I downloaded. Um, so, um, what, what was your name? Paul. Oh, Paul. So, like Paul said, you know, if you put the, the size of your images right here, it's very helpful when you're going to Canva or Photoshop or something and building it someplace else. So, here we have everything. If you want to preview it, oh my gosh, it's so long. Sorry to choose such a long one. Um, Let's see, wait, where's the, I think the preview's at the very bottom, don't get dizzy. No, it's not. Oh, you know what it is? I know, With, you have to actually look into a module. taking a bit but so in your library I'll just show you if you wanted to um, if, if you want to see what's going on you can click like we're editing and then you can click the eyeball and we can see what you have here Right, so you have to actually go into, it's kind of a drag, you have to go into one of the sections or the rows or the modules and, and, and take a look at it. Um, but then from here, if you are in the library, you can import or export the JSON file, so right up here. And, you, and it will allow you to import just um, one layout, it'll allow you to export just one, or you can import everything that you have here. And then if you were going to use something from your library, depending upon what you're adding, so I'm going to use the so across the top here, you're adding a whole layout down across the bottom from this from the you can add a section from the library or you could add um, a module you could add from the library columns or um, if you get into the modules you could add from library all right so let's say we wanted to load a layout from the library they have 
predefined layouts for you. So if you don't want to create something on your own, you can pull in one of these, or you go to your library and you pull in something that's already been made. Is that what you wanted to see? Yeah, right there, predefined layouts. Oh, the predefined layouts, okay. Right yeah, yeah, these are, these are great. And um, <coughs> in... Instead of saving money and time, because you just load that up and there, change the text, add the photos, and you're done. So. Yeah, but yeah. you know, you have to know where to click. You, you do have to, have to know. You have to know where to click. <laughs> you do. <laughs> we, there's no explanation. I know, well, yeah. We have a guide, actually, on Elegant Marketplace that you can, uh, a PDF that shows you which each one looks like. There, there are great video tutorials that walk through all of this. Yeah. Yeah, on Elegant Themes, they have great tutorials on these. And I think there they have a guide. There's a few different guides out there. So you can sort of cross-reference so you know what you're getting yourself into so you don't have to load each one up. Okay, last question. Any more questions? Last one. Okay. I'll, I'll have one more question. The one where you have the pictures all side by side with, it, with nothing in between. When do people prefer that? To oh, see it like that? Like to see it like that? Why? Yeah, I don't know, because I like the way it looks, and, okay. and <laughs> but that's just me, and, and it, um, you know, I guess some clients like it, and, and, you know, sometimes we design so many websites that, like, maybe we just, me, want something different, and maybe the client could, could care less, and maybe it's trendy, and a year from now we'll say, oh, like, can you believe she did the gutterless rose, you know, with those images, so... I think it's just an aesthetic choice. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah.